Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 6. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at cameras, we'll take a look at particle systems and we'll actually build up this final little bit of our first scene so we can finally piece together that intro sequence. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get into it. So, cameras are essential I would say for pretty much everything, not just viewing the game itself because they can come in extremely handy for certain sequences. For example, what I intend to do is have a camera, let's say around here, which will kind of represent the beginning of our game and we'll have our character walk across here. So we're going to probably get to that point throughout this tutorial. So firstly, let's bring in a couple of more textures for our game. So as always, you can get these on the website. So drag and drop them into Unity. Remember to unzip them first because Unity doesn't like it when you try importing files from a zipped folder. So on that premise, let's hold control, press D on both of those. And let's rename them one by one, of course, to have underscore N because they are normal maps. And same with this one, dirty wall. So basically this is just a wall and a concrete floor that we're going to use for this particular scene. So what we can do now is where before we've done one at a time, we can actually have both of those textures selected and change them to normal map and grayscale. So let's get this looking a little better now. So let's get it not so concretey, uh, or rather not so asphalty. So let's drag and drop the dirty wall onto dirty wall here, and let's add the normal map onto there. And it looks a little too much, so let's change this to 0.1, maybe 0.2. And the same with the ground. Let's have the concrete floor onto there. And I think I am going to change the tiling on this one. So on the tiling down here, I'm going to change this to 4x4 four four, and then I'm going to drag and drop that concrete floor normal map onto there and probably decrease the normal map to about 0.4 just so as it's not quite as intense. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll rotate my light a little. In fact, maybe quite a lot. In fact, no, do you know what? I'm going to change the colour, the albedo colour of our concrete here a little darker. And now I'm going to get rid of this object, which was the sidewalk section. However, that material that existed on there will still exist, so we don't need to worry about it too much. So we've got things in place now. So what I'm going to do is basically build this scene up a little more. So I'm going to have this wall, hold control, press D, and I'm going to drag it across here to match quite nicely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably best if we rename as well. So wall 001 and let's have this as wall 002 and one thing to note when we're building a scene up is whatever the camera doesn't see we don't need to worry about because there's no point in making things look neat and tidy if the camera never ever sees it a good example of that you will see in just a moment so i'm going to take this wall and i'm going to expand it on z to 10 so it's basically one massive cube and then I'm going to bring it to about there nicely flush with this wall and then bring it this way to about there now when I say it doesn't matter too much it does not matter one little bit that this wall looks like that up here and this one is one big huge block because the camera will never actually see those parts of the game so there's no point worrying too much about it so let's take this wall bring it over here it's nice and enclosed now and same with this one duplicate bring it down here and do you know what I'm not going to enclose this although we give need to give the impression that the whole thing is going to be enclosed I'm not actually going to enclose it so let's change our props around a little more just to kind of give ourselves a bit more leeway to work with so let's bring that to there uh, these boxes I guess can stay where they are uh, move them this way maybe a little bit 
duplicate them, bring them over here, rotate, because, you know, why not? It can stay like that. That can go somewhere there. So we basically now have a fake scene set up ready for an intro sequence. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a fake roof. So we can take the same block that we've used as a floor, both of them, hold control, press D, and bring them up. Again, it doesn't matter too much because the camera is never likely to see some of these things. So in doing that now, what we'll do is go to game object and we'll go to camera right here. So let's get this set nicely so as it actually looks like it's going to be some kind of intro sequence. And we'll rotate the camera, and, oops, minus 90 it should be. So we face that way. And I'm going to bring it down to the floor and bring it in this way a little bit to about there. So now we've got this camera. If we disable our first person, our first person, our third person controller, which is a contract killer, so we can turn it off up here. And if we press play now, we have this set and it looks a little bit cramped. So we need to work with this a little bit more. So we could probably do with pulling the camera back a bit. Remember what we're doing here is setting the scene ready for an intro sequence. So we've got to make it, you know, it's up to you if you want to make it as nice as you want it to be. You could add things in here. But what we're going to do is add in some dust particles now. So if we go to game object and go to effects and go to particle system, you'll be presented with something that looks a little bit crazy at first, but don't worry. Now, the general idea of a particle system is it creates an image or effect in this kind of way. But there is a lot to a particle system, but I'm not going to go through everything right now because some things are irrelevant at this point. But the things we are uh, concerned with, that's what we're going to go through. So let's start from the top here. We want pre-warm ticked. What pre-warm is is when we start the game, it will instantly start this particle system from its initial point of this space and do it from there. Pre-warm means that it seems like it's already started. So we start the scene with it already started. Start lifetime, uh, we'll keep as five because we want it to go on for at least five seconds. Start speed, we want to slow right down. Five is much too fast. If we have one, we can see just how much it has slowed down and it does start to give a hazy looking effect. So we can start maybe decreasing even more, 0 0.5, looks about right. Start size, I'm going to decrease this quite a bit, so I'm going to have 0 0.1, so they are relatively small. We don't need to worry about too much else here, apart from the start colour. What I feel with the start colour is we need to reduce the alpha more than anything. Now the alpha dictates how transparent or opaque it is. So 0 would be completely transparent. 255 would be completely opaque and anything in between would be a translucent. So let's have this, if we drag the slider, to about 40 something. So we can kind of see it, but it is mostly see-through. So we can click X on that. Don't need to worry about anything else here now. The one we are most interested in is this one, emission. Rate over time, let's change this to 100. What this will do is massively increase the rate that they come out over the time that it's running. Obviously, if we have this as a thousand, it's going to go a little bit crazy. As you can see, it looks like a plume of smoke, as it were. But we're not going for a plume of smoke here. We're going for a constant flow. So we keep this as about a hundred. The shape is going to be important. So if we click a mission again, it will just close a mission. The shape is what dictates how this looks. And because we want this to be kind of little dust particles floating around randomly, what we need to do is change the shape from cone to sphere. And now we need to change the radius to be a little bit bigger so it covers the entire room. And if we come up outside the room, we can see that they will eventually come out of that particular section. But we don't need to worry because, remember, what the camera doesn't see doesn't matter. So... Let's keep the radius as about three, as already uh, stated there. And what we do need to tick or change in this case is randomize direction. Change this to one. One means yes, zero means no. 
and you can see just how random they are becoming now. So at this point they look a little bit clustered together. So a good way of getting around this is heading back up here, changing the start speed to a little bit lower again, so 0 0.25 maybe, in fact, probably even lower than that, 0 0.1, and change the start lifetime to probably about 8, just so they last a little bit longer. Now you should be able to see if we press play at this point, they kind of pop in and pop out. And I don't think we really want them to pop in and pop out, so we need to fade them. And we can do that by going down here to size over lifetime. So if we click size over lifetime and click the little dot next to it to activate it, click the little size bar right here, and you'll see this red line go from here to here. What this means is it starts at nothing and gradually fades in and at the end of its life it just disappears. What we need to do is start at nothing, make it appear full and then fade to nothing. To do that we need to add a key. So right click on the red line and click add key. And then if we drag this to the top near enough to the middle and then drag this key all the way down, what this will essentially do is fade in from nothing to full and back out to nothing. So rather than pop in and pop out, if we press play now, they will give the impression of fading in and fading out. So it doesn't look as odd, if odd is the right word to use. So it looks a little bit better now. So next thing we're going to take a look at with this particle system is you could theoretically play around with a color over lifetime, but it's not really something you want to, not when we're playing with dust particles. I think it's a little bit pointless, but if we're playing with something like fire, then quite possibly. So for the dust effect that we're going for, we are pretty much there. You may want to change a little bit here, change the color to a bit gray, maybe decrease the alpha a little bit more until you get the perfect kind of dust effect that you would want to see. So again, that's, I might stick with that. That's not too bad. But also remember, you need to work with the position a little bit. So maybe bring it to the center of the room about there. And let's take a look at this now. Okay, so you can see what's going on and how this is reacting. So it's up to you. So now let's work again with the camera. What I might do is bring it up and make it look down a little bit. And the idea of what we're going for here is going to be our character's feet. So let's align this so our character's feet only appear on the camera. So that's what I want to go for. I want to get to a point where our character can walk across here. You would only see his feet. And that is how our intro is going to begin. So let's move the camera a little bit closer. About there. So next thing, let's take a look at lighting. Now we've already changed this directional light to a point light and changed it back to a directional light. So what we'll do is let's change it back to a point light. And we can see how this now affects this whole area just in general. So if we press play now, we can see just how this is coming together nicely. So if you can imagine, if I move our character, not that way, it'll be on the Z. So our scene would start, we would hear a couple of footsteps, and next thing you know, our character walks across the scene. That is how we're going to start it. So that is hopefully what we're gonna have. And we're gonna have some credits on the scene, say, created by such and such, developed by such and such. So that's something that we're going to take a look at in the next tutorial as well. We're going to take a look at some UI. We'll probably bring some more into this scene. Um, we'll deal more with cameras. We'll deal more with animations because ultimately it's going to be an animation which helps us create this scene a little bit more. Uh, one thing I do want to play around with just before we finish this is this palette itself. I would like to change to standard because I'm going to play around with these settings. And remember what I've already said, depending on how you want your game to look, a lot of this is dependent on what you do and how you play around with things like the normal map, things like the uh, materials themselves. And you can see changing that to a grayscale makes it look a bit crazy, but we can always change that by darkening the material and then changing the normal map here to relatively low. 
point two, point three. Okay. So now let's take a quick look at how this scene looks. So again, it's up to you how you want to work with this. It's your game, remember? I've given you the mechanics, the basics, and everything, how you could work with this. So it, it really is down to you now. In fact, I might take the grayscale off on that. There we go. So I'm going to save that scene there. So yeah, like I say, guys, next time we're going to work more into this, more into the scene. We'll do some UI and probably some animation with the cameras. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.